Welcome to Certification Terminal. As part of this series, we will discuss a couple of CompTIA Security Plus certification exam questions and answers. If a company replaces a user's social security number with a random string of characters for processing, but retains a secure mapping to the original number, which method are they using? Option A, tokenization. Option B, hashing. Option C, masking. Option D, encryption. The correct answer is Option A, tokenization. Tokenization involves replacing sensitive data with a randomly generated value called a token. In this scenario, the user's social security number is replaced with a random string of characters for processing. The original number is securely mapped to the token, allowing the company to maintain the association between the two without exposing the sensitive data. Next question. Bob is investigating an incident and wants to find records of attempted connections to a server using RDP. Which logs are unlikely to have this information? Option A, database logs. Option B, system logs. Option C, net flow logs. Option D, security logs. The correct answer is Option A, database logs. Database logs primarily record activities related to database management systems, such as SQL queries, transactions, and database user activities. They are unlikely to contain information about attempted connections to a server using RDP, as RDP connections typically occur at the system or network level, not within the database system. Next question. What term describes the new technique, recently implemented by Steve's company, to secure remote access for BYOD mobile device users, where users connect to corporate systems through a dedicated application with no corporate data accessible outside of it. Option A, full device encryption. Option B, storage segmentation. Option C, side loading. Option D, containerization. The correct answer is Option D, containerization. Containerization involves encapsulating an application and its dependencies into a separate container which provides isolation from the rest of the device's environment. In the context of BYOD security, containerization allows users to connect to corporate systems through a dedicated application, ensuring that corporate data is accessible only within the confines of the application and isolated from the device's other applications and data. Therefore, containerization best describes the approach described in the question. Next question. What are the benefits of domain keys identified mail, DKIM, in improving email security? Option A, by storing emails on a gateway. Option B, by filtering DNS requests. Option C, by blocking or allowing access to specific websites. Option D, by providing a digital signature to authenticate email content and its sender. The correct answer is, option D, by providing a digital signature to authenticate email content and its sender. DKIM provides a digital signature that is attached to outgoing email messages. This signature allows the recipient's email server to verify the authenticity of the email sender and the integrity of the email content. By providing this authentication mechanism, DKIM helps prevent email spoofing and phishing attacks, thereby improving email security. Next question. Bob calculated a unique identifier for three separate log files on his computer. Each file contains entries from distinct days. What function did Bob likely use? Option A, use of a secure hash function. Option B, collision. Option C, syntax error. Option D, decryption. The correct answer is, option A, use of a secure hash function. Secure hash functions like MD5, Take an arbitrary input, like a file, and generate a unique fixed size string, the hash. This hash acts like a fingerprint for the data. Since each log file contains different entries from distinct days, their content will be unique. Consequently, the hash function will generate a unique identifier for each file. Next question. What is the objective of conducting a network security assessment? Option A, to monitor network activity. Option B, to prevent data breaches. Option C, to identify vulnerabilities and weaknesses in the network. Option D, to improve network speed. The correct answer is, 
Option C, to identify vulnerabilities and weaknesses in the network. The primary objective of conducting a network security assessment is to identify vulnerabilities and weaknesses within the network infrastructure. This involves assessing various aspects of the network, such as network devices, configurations, protocols, and security controls, to uncover potential weaknesses that could be exploited by attackers. Next question. Which security control category includes measures like visitor registration, badging, and escorting for visitor control? Option A. Operational. Option B. Physical. Option C. Managerial. Option D. Technical. The correct answer is. Option A. Operational. While physical security controls are a separate type of control focused on securing the physical environment, visitor procedures such as registration, badging, and escorting are indeed operational controls. They fall under the operational category of security controls, which encompasses the day-to-day -day practices and processes implemented to manage and mitigate security risks. Next question, which RAID level would Lori select to support fault tolerance for her database server, ensuring recovery from the failure of any single drive while utilizing distributed parity bits? Option A, RAID 3. Option B, RAID 1. Option C, RAID 5. Option D, RAID 0. The correct answer is, Option C, RAID 5. RAID 5 stripes data across multiple drives, like RAID 0, but also distributes parity bits across all drives. This distribution of parity enables fault tolerance, as the system can reconstruct lost data using the parity information in the event of a single drive failure. RAID 5 offers a balance between performance, fault tolerance, and storage efficiency, making it a commonly used RAID level for databases and other critical applications. Next question. A large financial institution is evaluating the security of procedures related to customer data handling by seeking assistance from an external organization. Which security protocol is being implemented in this scenario? Option A, internal audit. Option B, compliance check. Option C, self-assessment. Option D, third-party audit. The correct answer is, option D, third-party audit. A third-party audit involves an independent assessment conducted by an external organization or auditor. In this scenario, the financial institution is seeking assistance from an external organization to evaluate the security of procedures related to customer data handling. This external organization would perform a third-party audit to provide an unbiased assessment of the institution's security practices. This is a common practice in industries like finance where external audits provide an objective evaluation of security measures and compliance with regulations and industry standards. Next question, which subnet would be most suitable for a security administrator to create on a corporate firewall interface for establishing a DMZ with the capacity to host up to 14 physical hosts? Option A, 192.168.0.16.1.0. Option B, 192.168.0.16.2.255.25.255.248. Option C, 192.168.1.50.255.255.25.240. Option D, 192.168.2.32.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0
DSS. Option A, DSA. Option B, 3DS. Option C, RSA. Option D, ES. The correct answer is Option A, DSA. DSA is a public key cryptography algorithm specified in the Digital Signature Standard, DSS, by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. It is specifically designed for creating digital signatures and is widely used for this purpose, particularly in government applications. DSA is based on modular arithmetic and discrete logarithms. Next question. Among the following options, which certificate format is likely employed in the displayed certificate? Option A, P12. Option B, PM. Option C, DER. Option D, PFX. The correct answer is Option B, PM. PM is a widely used format for storing and transmitting cryptographic keys and certificates. It is ASCII encoded and often delimited by begin certificate and end certificate headers. The displayed certificate appears to be in PM format due to its base 64 encoded content and the presence of such headers. Next question. Which type of card would be the most suitable choice for Bob's facility, given his primary concern about authentication speed in a card-based access control system? Option A, magnetic stripe card. Option B, proximity card. Option C, photo ID card. Option D, smart card. The correct answer is, option B, proximity card. Proximity cards use radio frequency identification, RFID, technology, allowing for contactless authentication. Users can simply wave the card near the reader for quick authentication, making proximity cards ideal for situations where speed is crucial, such as Bob's facility. Next question, which of the following options serves as the prime example of a technical security control? Option A, firewall rules. Option B, asset inventory. Option C, employee credit checks. Option D, fire detection system. The correct answer is, option A, firewall rules. Firewall rules are a prime example of a technical security control. Firewalls enforce access policies between networks by inspecting and filtering incoming and outgoing network traffic based on predetermined security rules. These rules are configured within the firewall to allow or deny specific types of traffic based on criteria such as source or destination IP address, port number, and protocol. Firewall rules are implemented and managed at the network level, making them a technical control. Next question. When considering large corporations with a complex network environment, including servers, routers, switches, and workstations, what is the recommended method to prevent the proliferation of worms? Option A. Segmenting the network with firewalls. Option B using SSL certificates. Option C, disabling or restricting DCP. Option D, installing WEF. The correct answer is, option A, segmenting the network with firewalls. This is the recommended method to prevent the proliferation of worms in large corporations with a complex network environment. Network segmentation involves dividing a network into smaller, isolated segments or zones each with its own security controls. By using firewalls to enforce segmentation, organizations can limit the spread of worms between different network segments, such as servers, routers, switches, and workstations. Firewalls can control the flow of traffic between segments, blocking unauthorized access, and helping to contain worm outbreaks. Thank you very much for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. If these questions add value to your preparation, we'll meet in the next video. Take care until then.